everybody. It's Monday, January 15th. I think today we're celebrating, the, commemorating Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, let me just read a little bit from our first reading from 1 Samuel. But Samuel said, Does the Lord so delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the command of the Lord? Obedience is better than sacrifice and submission than the fat of rams. And he realized that the, the holiday of Dr. Martin Luther King, I just got back from Mississippi, so I still feel that flavor. And I was in Mobile, Alabama, and, and talking to some of the parishioners there who had grandparents who were slaves and living in Jim Crow, and even in the 60s, 70s, and, you know, dealing with the KKK and, you know, things like that. So I remember Dr. Martin Luther King, and most of us know, and his great speech there the, in Washington. I remember reading this little fact about him, and I don't know if it gets much publicity, but it really talks about to me what he's truly like about the nonviolence. He was up and coming, wasn't but the you know his the fame that he had. He was at a book bookstore in Boston. I think he was signing books, and as he was signing that, someone came up and I think it wasn't with a knife, I think it was a letter opener and stabbed him in the chest, and uh, it punctured him. Lucky he didn't get to his heart. But what struck me most is that as he was collapsing, falling to the ground, and the pain, the blood spilling, he looked up his, at, at his assailant, and he just said, I forgive you. And that's powerful. That was his immediate response. So he spoke about nonviolence, and there was such an example. And unfortunately, in our country today, there's a lot of in injustices, but now people are not going by the means of nonviolence of love, but it's really more violence and hatred, physically, and the language, how they use. Could you imagine Dr. King speaking that way as he speaks today, you know, using those, you know, four-letter words, and imagine? It would set back the civil rights years. It would, never, it would never have been successful if that's how he treated others, but it was because he accepted the blows and the harm, spoke nonviolently. He forced people, <laughs> you know, in a way, your, your conscience, and he forgave. So on this uh, day, we pray for the brothers and sisters who are suffering any injustice. We pray that we may be nonviolent. And like Dr. King, be the first really willing to forgive. God bless you.